okay to be uncomfortable. I'm going to talk while we're in this atmosphere. We'll do a little bit of the message of the day. I just want to stay here. The toddlers need to go back. They can go back. The kids need to stay out today. I feel like it's vital that they stay out today. We get to celebrate today. While we're worshiping Jesus, we get to celebrate life. We get to celebrate something good that our government did. While we're turning, Roe versus Wade. Leaving it up to the people, to the states, to decide. My prayer is that we decide the right thing to do, to go the right direction. Hey, I just sent you a picture of that last picture I sent you. When I grew up, I had four dads by the time I was 16, by the time I was this age right here. Four dads. Done been through abuse, drug addiction, dealing drugs. By this age, I'd already been in all those things. And I know I wasn't a baby that my parents had planned, but I was a baby that God had planned. Because he dreamed of me before the foundation of the earth to speak a word, to have a voice, to have a say in this world. And I'm so grateful that my mom and dad let me come into this world. Because I want to play a story, just a little story this morning. Because if I wouldn't have been able to be in this world and speak the voice that I have, you wouldn't be here. The water wouldn't be here. The testimonies of this week would not have happened. A young man in the front row here with stage four cancer wouldn't be here today. But two years ago, God touched him. He's cancer free today. His life wasn't great, was it? Drugs were a big part of his life. But God, God loved him so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes should not perish. You will not perish. You will have everlasting life beyond this world I celebrate life today I celebrate adoption today I understand that there's people that make bad choices I understand that there's people that make tough choices in life and they might go out of wedlock and have a baby out of wedlock But God can turn all of that around for good. He can turn all that around for good. But we must give him a chance. And I'm thankful that what we get to celebrate today is that chance, that life chance that babies get to have. The voice gets to be heard because the testimony that they carry No matter how good of a life they have or bad of a life they have, they're going to have a testimony when they come to Jesus. And that testimony is going to change someone's life to make that person come to the knowledge of God. Where that person can change a person's life. The circle of love, the circle of life through a Father who lives in heaven who loved us. He mapped all of this out and gave it to us, set down so we could stand up and do what we're doing today. And I'm grateful for that. The story of adoption. If you're in the arms of the Father, if you've asked Jesus to come in your heart, you are adopted by the Father of fathers. 
You were adopted by the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And everything that he has is yours. You just have to grab a hold of it. And if he says, stay away, stay away for a moment, but then he's going to give you access. I remember my youngest son come to me, Austin, and said, Dad, we're having trouble having a baby. And I said, well, let's just pray about it. And that's the Lord. They tried for a while. Let us know. And they come to church with us one day, and I, and I remember I'm standing up front, and I'm just worshiping. And the Lord gave me a, an image of a, a young girl, a young blonde girl with blue eyes, and said, this is going to be your granddaughter. Your son Austin and your, your daughter-in-law, Tori, are going to have a daughter. Blonde hair and blue eyes, and they were dark hair and dark eyes. And I told them the vision that God had gave me. He said that they're going to bring, she's going to bring hope. And I said, Austin, I said, God has shown me a vision of a girl that you're going to have a baby girl. And my boys had been fighting that time of see who was going to have the first girl. So they're having a competition of having kids. I have 10 grandkids right now. And so they had this competition and, 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 and I told them, they said, well, dad, how are we going to have a blonde haired girl? We're both brown hair and brown eyed. How are we going to have a blonde haired and blue eyed girl? And I said, I don't know. I just feel like the Lord showed me that. Austin. They started getting into foster care. They thought this is the only way we're going to be able to have children. They started fostering some kids. And two years later, my son came to me and knocked on my door. He said, Dad, I want to show you something. He showed me a picture of this little girl. He said, we're going to be able to adopt this little girl. if you have that picture or not. Oh, it's good. Her name is Hope. God said, you're going to have a granddaughter, blonde hair and blue eyes, and she would bring hope to the family. My first granddaughter, Already at that age, abuse, drugs have been in her life. And I remember when I first met her, we're sitting at a dinner table. There was a couple other children that Austin and had to get for an emergency situation. We just met her for the first time. And she said, because she saw the other kids, she said, does this mean I have to go somewhere else to live? It broke my heart. I said, no, you're not going to have to go somewhere else to live. She'd already been to a few other places. But I'm telling you the story of love this morning. The value of life this morning, the value of adoption because we are adopted. And then there comes another couple of boys. We're still praying for Austin and to have children. Another couple of boys, Caden, was adopted into the family. That's Elijah. We'll go, Caden. It's my grandson. And Elijah, my grandson, before they met my boys, my boy Austin, they'd already at one time been addicted to drugs. They watched their younger brother die. But because of life, they're getting to live life now. We can't make that choice to take life because God can take every life and turn it around for good. 
Every bit of them. Now I've got the rest of my grandkids. I'm just going to play them out here because listen, if it wasn't for that first picture of me, that guy, that little farm boy that grew up on a farm, four dads by the time he was 16, my parents would have decided not to have me. Not only would we not have this, but I wouldn't have had these three, and I wouldn't have Owen to celebrate his birthday yesterday. We wouldn't be able to have Lincoln. Or Ledger. Or Dustin. And this next one, Rhett. This was the baby they couldn't have after adopting three. This is my boy, Rhett. We have two girls. Everly and Magnolia. Did I get them all? Did I get all ten? <laughs> Do we have the picture of Everly in the seat? Sitting in the chair, all muddy. Okay. She's a mess, sitting on the ground. This dirt. Dirt coming out of her mouth, eating watermelon. Go back to that first picture. No, mine. That guy right there wouldn't have been born. None of that would have happened. None of that would have happened. None of those faces would you see. I wouldn't have been able to do this with my boys. It's dangerous. I recommend you don't do it. I don't know if it'll play or not. It will not play. Where we are riding them. Up and down the highway, up and down the roads. Okay. It's not playing on that one. I wouldn't have been able to do that. Enjoy that life with my children. Thank you guys for letting me tell that part of the story. Listen. I'm to the point now when I get here on Sunday morning, I, I, I don't even, whatever the Lord wants to do is what He wants to do. I really don't care. I'm not going to have a program. I'm not going to walk in, hand me a piece of paper and tell you what I'm going to do today because I don't know. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not knowing. Sometimes I get a little bit of heads up. But I'm okay with that. I, I'm comfortable with that. Why? Because I'm comfortable with love. I'm comfortable with being in love with Jesus. When you're in love with Jesus, it's amazing. It's tremendous. I'm grateful this morning for that love. We'll stay here with the ambient music, and that's okay. And if we'll do offering here in a minute. You all right standing up here? He's... You have to be bold to be on the platform. Your guy. Todd was here. His trios. And <laughs> I love it. I love it. We had such an amazing time this week. How many of you made it out for the revival? Yeah. You missed it. You missed something amazing. You know something amazing is going on when you get 25 Amish people to drive an hour and a half away <laughs> to come in the sanctuary and get in a pool and the request was I want more of Jesus I want more of Jesus I want more of Holy Spirit was their request that's all they wanted was more they got kicked out of their family they cannot go back into their family again 
Some of them have parents that they'll never talk to again. But they were willing to make the sacrifice to have more of Jesus. You know you're doing something good when a little girl leaves and she asks God to be able to have a prayer language to be able to speak to him in a different way. And she goes out in her van and lays a prayer cloth on her head. You turn that up. You know you're doing something right. You got a girl in the front row that's bowing down and worshiping. You know you're doing something right. When you got people, they're selling their home, they sold their home, bought an RV sitting out there. And say, God, wherever you want us to go, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. Drove here from North Carolina, I think this time you come from North Carolina, Georgia, North Carolina. Why? Because they're in love with the Father. Because the Father loves them. It don't get no better than this. The Word of God says we're two or more gathered together. There He is in the midst. That's why when you're alone, you got Jesus and Holy Spirit. There's three. You're good. You can have Him in your own midst with them with you. That makes up the three. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that this morning. You know you're doing something right when the lady gets in the water. She's demon-possessed and don't even know it. But she's feeling the effects of it through her family. When a young daughter says, when I say, what do you want Jesus to do for you? And she says, I don't want to have nightmares anymore. Maybe she was four, three or four. I don't want to have nightmares anymore. I'm going to have to run to my parents' bedroom at night because I'm scared. Jesus entered into that girl and took the darkness away and mom that was holding her the demon that was in her trembled she shook and shook and shook so I knew that something was going on with that woman I knew why the darkness was there we got through the other young girl who said when she closed her eyes, all she see was black and dark. I said, do you, honey, do you ever see light? She goes, I never see light. I always see dark. So I had her close her eyes. I put her under the water and brought her back up. And I had her keep her eyes closed. I prayed with Dad, who was full of shame and guilt and condemnation. Put him under the water with the daughter and come up. And all that left, the joy in his face. Then I had them step aside and I had the mom come up. And the Lord had showed me that she would, that she'd played with Ouija boards, but that they had been involved in her life. And I said to her, I said, have you ever practiced witchcraft? And she said, I haven't, but when I was a little girl, me and my siblings, my, my parents would make us stand in front of a Ouija board. They would have someone come and do all the demonic things with it. Open up a door that she didn't know it opened up in her life. So when we prayed for her, we're going to put her under the water. I knew it was going to happen. And she'd come back and the demon possessed itself. But he had to be quiet because I said to be quiet. So he did it quietly. And he come out of it. If you don't believe this, you should have been here. 
It happened. Did you see it? Who saw it? If it wasn't for that first guy on the screen, that wouldn't have happened. That young girl might have grown up living in darkness, always fearful, always afraid. And fear keeps us from the love of God, but perfect love casts out all fear. If there's something in your life that you're fearful of, it's, it's the lack of love that you have in your life for Him. So the more you step into a life of love, LOL, laughter, whatever you want to call it, the more you step into LOL, life of love, the less that you will have LOL, lack of love. Father wants us all to have the love encounter that he has for us. We got a text this morning, young girl, that dreamed bad dreams every night. She got up in the middle of the night, but this time she come to the mom. She's smiling, she's laughing, and she had joy. And she was just telling them that she was happy for what Jesus did. The other girl in the water, she saw yellow and green and purple when she closed her eyes. That's what life does. That's what life can do. Change one another. That's what Jesus wants to do. Change one another. Change you and I into being all that he called us to be through that life of love. Through living for him. Through serving him. Through minding him. Going wherever you have to go. And doing whatever you have to do. Whatever the cost. In a moment, we're going to take up an offering for the church. But in that offering, we're going to include an offering for these two and their family. Ministry costs money. And I, you know what? This, this is something I want you to know. We're debt-free ministry, and I want you to know this. I love that. I believe it's going to stay that way. But this is what I've seen. When the, when the house don't give like they should, the Lord brings it in from somewhere else. There's been, there's been weeks when, when the house is given almost nothing, but in that same week, someone from the outside will send a $1,000 check, a $2,000 check. But the reason that we give, the reason that I want you to give is not because we need it. It's because you need it. You give because you need it. Because you need what God has for you. And it's through giving that he wants to give you. Not through giving just of money, but of your time. And of your life of going out to do whatever it takes to minister to a lost and dying world. And I'm grateful for that this morning. I'm grateful for the givers that we have. And I'm grateful for the ones who don't even know what it means to give. But I, I do tell you this, when you give, God will give back. I don't give to get, but because I give, I do get. And I'm thankful for that. I'll finish this message in a minute. We're going to go into offering right now. I feel like that the Lord just wants to to have an opportunity to give to him. So we have the, the bowl here that my father made, the box in the back, the square reader in the back, lol-mc.com. He can give on there. Get a song for us, brother, and I'll just keep going live and we'll just...
Jessica J, J A Y. Make it out to the church. Okay, Go. make it out to Life of Love with Jessica or Wes's name. Okay, good idea. Friday night, we had 182 people in this place. <laughs> we were packed out. I love it. I love it. We had 86, right? 86, 75, get in the water. Friday night. 65, get in the water. Thursday night, 152 Thursday night. What an awesome thing. There were so many testimonies, I can't even give them all to you. So much freedom, so much deliverance, so much healing. All the reports are still coming in. Still getting it. This morning, they kept rolling in and rolling in. I want to give you guys the opportunity this morning. If you battle fear in any way, any way, whether it's fear of man, fear of finances, whatever the fear might be. Anything that you're fearful of, you're lacking love in that area. Come and grab a hold of that love. Ask the Father to take the fear away 
We replace it with love. You don't know Jesus this morning. We give you an opportunity to come. Become an orphan. Be adopted to the family of God. The altars are open. If you have fear, come and pray. If you don't know Jesus, come and pray. So grateful over 20 people in the two days had asked Jesus to come in their heart to live in their lives. A mom, a mom had been praying for her sons who were in a dark place to come to Jesus. Both of them were here. They both came forward and asked Jesus to come in their heart. Mom's prayer was answered. See, no matter how bad the situation looks, God can turn it all around. It doesn't matter. You can take a 16-year-old drug addict and turn him into a preacher. He can do that. He loves doing that. He took Moses, who killed a man. A baby that floated down a river. later on killed a man and led a nation out of captivity. I'm just saying. We're trying to make choices that's not our choice to make. I just keep feeling to share um so I got a call uh, Friday morning just as I was approaching the church. It was from a lady in Indy, and her, the number popped on my phone when she dialed in as if I knew her, like she was already in my contacts, and, and I really didn't know the name, so I just answered it, and it was about the meeting Friday night. And um, it was about our daughter, and our daughter is 14 years old and tried to commit suicide in January, and it failed. But uh, she noticed just the last couple weeks just the dark place her daughter has been in. And um, so I just, I said, well, let's just pray now for her. Um, the point was she was wanting, she was going to make her daughter come Friday night to the revival. And um, so in she walks with the daughter. So I'm like, thank you, God, you know, the daughter agreed to come. So when I saw them sitting back over here, I went back and I saw Victoria and Darlene. This was during our six o'clock prayer time. And I was like, hey guys, can you pray for that young girl over there? You know, just, I didn't give great details. I said, you know, her mom's just battling. You know, God needs to touch her tonight. So when Pastor Todd did the altar call Friday night, she was one of the ones up here. So I was just obviously <laughs> a teary mess. Then when she got in the water, I got to minister with her. <laughs> so... I just thought, what a blessing. Um, she told me in the water that she was going to commit suicide that night. And it so reminded me of our sweet little Helen, um, who God saved as well, <laughs> as you all remember. But um, she was a beautiful young lady. Even Maggie, the photographer, she's like, she is just gorgeous. I mean, I'm like, what? And obviously, you know, we see, we see Jesus and what these young ones can be. So I just ministered to her, and she come up, and her whole countenance was different. Obviously, we see that so much in the water, but um, I'm usually not the crier. <laughs> He's usually the crier, and I have cried all weekend. I couldn't even hardly put makeup on yesterday to go to the birthday party because I'm still, I was still crying. 2 a.m. Saturday morning, and before we went to bed, I was still crying. So... Um, it's just the goodness of God is what he's doing in that water. And um, that young girl and that mother got to leave. And that mother, I know, has no fear that that daughter will commit suicide because she had an encounter with Jesus. And I just released Isaiah 11:2 over her. 
and um, told her to read that and just put her name in it. It was about the root of Jesse, but um, I am just believing, you know, that is just one of many. I mean, just the amazing things we're getting in already, and a lot was about family and children. So I just want to praise God for that. And our announcement, uh, really the only announcement I was going to do tonight was at 6 o'clock is our own water immersion service. And um, it's just going to be a continuation of what God did Thursday and Friday. So 6 o'clock, if you can get here, get here. We do have several people that have been um, coming down experiencing Jesus in the water from the I-Town Church, and tonight several of them are going to serve in the water. So they are thrilled. This is Faye. Faye is a dreamer. She has visions, as we all do. And this morning, I kept popping all these pictures to her about children, about children speaking in tongues and all these different pictures. Last night, Throughout the night, she was praying, and God has started speaking to her about the children. The only hope of the enemy of the world is to take our children, take their voices, silence them, and no more. No more. So, real briefly, last night before I went to bed, I always journal. And in my journaling, I just asked the Lord what was on his heart. And he said, it's this next generation. And he just began to pour into me what his heart is for them and that he has a plan to set them apart for his kingdom purpose. And that that has to come through our prayers. And in the middle of the night after journaling, I woke up from a very vivid dream that I know for a fact was from the Lord. And I asked the Lord, I said, what is my part in this? And he showed me on my knees, face down in prayer. Yeah. So I got up, got on my knees in the middle of my bedroom floor, face down in prayer, and I felt the glory of God fall upon me. And I just began to decree over all the children in my family and all the children that God brought to my mind in this generation, that they would be set apart for the kingdom of God and that the things that the enemy would try to bring in through the school systems, through the airways, through the TVs, through the screens, would not have any effect on them because God has them set apart. And as I was decreeing this over my family and, and these children, the Lord, I felt the Lord saying, and I have a word from the Lord, I have a word from the Lord, and so he released me from the power of his anointing because his anointing was so heavy, I couldn't even lift my head. So I'm going to do my best to read it because I did not actually gone through and done all this spell check stuff. But I, this is what I feel like the Lord spoke to me last night. He says, I hear the word of the Lord say, I am pouring a fire upon you that this fire will flow in and out of you and as people feel my presence, they will be transformed. And that was when I felt the weight of his glory so strong and he took me to a vision that I had here in the church on Wednesday night during intercessory prayer. And in that vision, I saw a lavish garden, no flowers, just greenery everywhere with a stone bench and a wheelchair at the end and Jesus was in the wheelchair and my first thought is why is Jesus in the wheelchair and I looked in my vision to see him again and he wasn't there the only thing I could see was this light lifted up out of this wheelchair and two doves flying around and God took me back to that vision last night but this time the focus was on the bench that was there and the detail and the carving and how care you know you know it had a purpose because it was so cared for and and just even the carvings in the bench were so intricate that it was time spent well invested on that bench and as i focused on on that i began to pray and i look over for the wheelchair and i see the wheelchair but above the wheelchair i see a whirlwind and this whirlwind is going through this garden and it's cleaning up all the trash and as it's cleaning up the trash, I, I heard him say, 
He says, I am cleansing my church. It is time, it is time, it is time for my people to rise up in the power, the authority, and the boldness of who my son is yes. and who my son was yes. on this earth. Yes. He led by example, and it is time for the church to rise up and lead by example. He says, it will not be easy, but it is time, it is time, it is time. Rise up, my people, my church. And I hear him say, remember, my church is not the building. My church is inside of you. Yes. Rise up, rise Hallelujah. up, my church. Stop worrying about the next great thing I'm going to do in you. I can feel its presence all over it. He says, stop listening for my voice. He says, start listening for my voice. Hear the cry of my heart. Move in my direction, the moving and the flow of my spirit where I am leading you, not in the flow of your desires, but in the flow of who I am. The Lord says, rise up, rise up. It is time. It is time. It is time. Aren't you grateful we can hear the voice of the Lord this morning? Not only hear His voice. Whatever He says to do, do. I was going a whole different direction this morning. This is what He said to do. Imagine living life that way. Doing what He says to do. Not only hearing His voice, but obeying what He says to do as well. So I'm grateful, I'm honored to be a son, I'm honored to be his son. Let's stand. forget about Monday, July 4th. We're having a block party. We have First Street shut down. We have kids stuff to do, bounce house, live music, all kind of games to play. Come and be a part of that. Fireworks are at, I believe, at 10 o'clock. We'll be able to watch them from there. You can see them from, from that street. Show, I'll be there all day. Show up whenever. It's 6 o'clock, Shelly said. She's wanting to sleep in, I think. tired I might want to sleep in I don't know but I'm grateful we get to do this we get to do this we get to be family we get to enjoy time together enjoy people from states away that they have to offer painting a beautiful lady to praise and ask the Lord what he wants people to see that open door for us to walk through walk through I don't know if we have the picture that I saw at the airport or not I don't know if he loaded that or not I'd ask the Lord when I went and picked up Pastor Todd you can load that I think Shelly sent it to you in a text so whirlwind has always been a part of my life since my death. You don't know I died in a car crash and was brought back to life. A few days before I was in that car crash, I was knighted with the name Whirlwind. And God gave me a vision, he said, I'm stretching you as far as the heaven is from the earth. I'm squeezing everything out of you that's not of me. I'm having, giving you open access from heaven to earth to fill up with the things that I have for you. When we come to this building here, and I'll sit here and watch when the wind blows. There'll be a, a little tornado of trash and a whirlwind of trash coming from that direction. So if it lines up with your word, it'll come from that direction. They'll meet right here in the front of the church, and they'll twirl together and just be a big pile of trash twisting right in front of the church. And I asked the Lord about that one day. I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, 
I'm bringing everything to you that's not wanted everywhere else. We've seen it. We're seeing it. I don't know where everybody's at today. I really don't. But we're here. But on the way, to, on the way to the airport, tell me when you have it loaded. On the, on the way to the airport, praying to God. Lord, I want to sign. I need to sign. I need something. Show me what this week's going to look like. What this event's going to look like. They're still waiting to get it up. This is amazing. Listen. Listen, just ask. Ask and you'll receive. I mean, ask and you will receive. Lord, give me a sign. Ask him. Give me a sign. Lay out a fleece. Ask him for something. He's going to give it to you. On my way to the airport, I'm driving down right at the airport. I'm right there getting ready to go around. And, I, and I, I, I'm asking for a sign. I'm praying. And I look out the corner of my eye and I saw that and I said, there's no way. And, I, and right then, that moment, I took a picture and drove. I'm telling you right now, I broke the law. I picked that, my phone up and I captured that picture in the sky. Here's your son. I'm going to be there. Can't even make this stuff up. He's so good. And we've had um, at least three people share with us within probably the last four months that they um, have seen angels stirring the waters. And they're all different people from different places that have been in been visiting so I think that's awesome as well um, yes. stir in the waters yes. well, thank you all for being here this morning I know it was not traditional by far but I believe this is the new traditional God's just doing something he's going to close us out in the song we're going to go off live and, and uh, we'll just worship and, and you can fade out as you want just go and be with the Lord. Serve Him well. Do what He asks you to do and live for Him. Father, we just thank You for today, for what You're doing, for all that You've done in our lives, Lord, for bringing us to this house this day to encounter You, Lord, once again. We thank You for Your love and mercy and Your grace upon us. Thank You for traveling mercies. Thank You for the healing that's already been paid for on Calvary that we get to encounter it gets to manifest in us. We thank you, Lord, for your manifestation of healing that works through all of us. We glorify you. Be with us tonight as people are coming to be touched in the water to be encountered by you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You're free to go. Is the spirit of the Lord, oh, well,